Hi there and welcome to another Code Zonk video. We're going to go ahead and take a second look at the Hopscotch app, which I've got right here in the center of my screen on my iPad. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that icon and bring it right up. Hopscotch I had looked at before and I did an introductory demonstration of Hopscotch uh, many weeks ago. In fact, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll link to that video uh, right here on the screen. If you are watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this on your mobile app, then you will see a link to my previous video, which was really just sort of a high level, uh, entry level demonstration of what you can do. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of take you back into some of that to sort of remind you of the functionality that I was demonstrating. What I'll do is I'll click on the home menu here, which is the, the one that you see highlighted in green on the very bottom of your screen. I'll click on that. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, click on blank project. Because what you'll see is when you drag in a character, I'll pick this one here. You just go ahead and drag that character into the field and click on this add new rule. It gives you the ability to uh, conduct certain activities based on specific events. So right here, the first thing that you have to define is the actual event that's going to take place and invoke all of the activities on your character. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, we'll go ahead and take action when the play button is tapped. So I'll drag that into my when, and that represents my programming event. Now what I'll do is I'll just drag some miscellaneous abilities in just to show you what's happening. So we'll say run around, do a backflip, and that's it, we'll just leave it at that. And when I press play, predictably, my character runs around and then does a backflip. But what's interesting about that is when I go back, oh, I lost it, hang on a second, let me try this again. Okay, I punched the wrong key and that took me out of my screen, so I'm back. Now, when I look at the actual activities or abilities that I've put in based on my play button event, when you look at this, and I'll click on this little pencil here to expand it, you actually see that what you've got is a sophisticated set of instructions, all of which sort of represent some of the basics of programming. So getting this into the hands of kids is actually a really good idea. Doing things like set speed to 100 is pretty straightforward and basic. But when you scroll down a little bit and you see repeat times two, and then repeat times six right underneath it. What you're actually looking at here are looping constructs. And what's interesting about this one is this is a, a, a nested looping construct. So to introduce these concepts to kids early is really good. And this is a really fun way to do it. This is kind of what I demonstrated in my previous video, but there's certainly a lot more to look at in this application. And what's really astonishing to me is that you can get this app on your iPad without paying a dime. And it is extremely thorough as far as uh, it being sort of a, a lesson plan and how to code. So let me go ahead and X out of this. And what I'll do is I'll just go back one and I will click on the home button at the bottom of my screen here. And this is going to show me a handful of things that are featured. And what these featured event, or I'm sorry, these featured scripts are, they look like games or, or activities. These are actually things that other people who have this application have done and submitted for other people to either try or augment and participate in. And that's really interesting. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take a look at just one random example. Uh, and I'm gonna look at this one here. This one looks interesting. This is called Monkey Jump and it's right here on the very right of my screen. I'll bring that up. And what this is gonna do first off is it's gonna give us the instructions. Tap anywhere on the screen to move the monkey. Collect the fruits for points. Each fruit is for one point. Dodge the bombs or you'll lose five points. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and begin. All right, so as I tap, the more I tap, the more I move. I see bombs coming up. And when I see a bomb, I definitely wanna move out of the way, right? I mean, this is all very straightforward as far as the gameplay is concerned. But what's really interesting about this is that using these tools that we just demonstrated in Hopscotch, somebody actually used these tools to create this game. And that means that, I just hit a bomb, that means that you know the random generation of the fruit and where it appears, uh, the consequences for hitting a bomb, you know, the scoring, the movement of the character, all of this was actually defined using the hopscotch tools. And that's what makes this so fascinating. And as you scroll through some of the uh, activities and projects that others have submitted, what you'll actually find is that in some cases, they actually expect you to do a little bit of work before things will actually kick off and start working as expected, which means it's sort of a collaborative learning effort. You go in and you sort of finish up somebody else's work before you can be begin. It's really neat. So what I'll do is I'll just back out of here for a second and I'll show you that the way that some of these people actually get this stuff working is by following these very sophisticated tutorials. So what I'll do is I'll click on this home button 
button here. I'm sorry, the menu button, and that's the one that's highlighted in green on the bottom. I'll click on that right now, and I'll scroll down. It's, it says here up at the top, what is it that you want to make? And we did a blank project, but I'm going to scroll through here, and I'm going to show you that there's plenty that you can do. And some of it is going to be stuff that's really familiar to kids. So if you've got kids who are interested in gaming, for example, showing, this, showing them this application is a really good way to see if you can actually spawn some interest in learning how to code. Angry Birds, for example, is a game that plenty of people have played. And this shows you how to make an Angry Birds clone using the tools in this very hopscotch application, meaning you can do this right now. Just download this application and, and you've got the tools that you need to make this game. Let's go ahead and go in there and show you what that's all about. So the first thing you notice, I'll pause this video really quick, is you'll notice that you've got, you've got a canvas basically. And this canvas means that you can go in and start dragging in characters, dragging in shapes, and then adding some programming commands to each of those items to make them come to life and do what you need them to do in a game. Let me press play on this video for a second to just show you what this is all about. From Hopscotch headquarters in New York City, and I want you to get angry because today... So now the interesting thing about this video that appears down here on the right is that what this guy is going to do is he's going to talk you through all of the things that you need in order to make an Angry Birds application using the Hopscotch tools. If you look at the length of this video, you'll see that it's almost 30 minutes long. So this is a really thorough walkthrough on how to use the Hopscotch tools to make a game. If you were to go through there and pause as you needed to and follow the instructions to the letter, you will be able to get a working Angry Birds application using these tools. It's a really great way to, to not only learn how to code, but to do it doing something fun and that you enjoy. We'll back out and I'll show you a couple of others. Flappy Bird is another really great example. Let's bring this up. The first thing you'll notice is that you actually do get a canvas, and then you also get the tutorial video as well. Hey, it's Alish. And Liza. And today, we're gonna make Flappy, Flappy Bird. Bird. If you haven't played with Hopscotch before, try out Breakdance or Treasure Dive videos before you tackle this one, just to get a sense of what you're I'll pause it right there. It's really fascinating. This one goes for about 15 minutes and it walks you through everything that you need to do in order to create the obstacles, to create the scrolling background, to put in a character, have that character move, and to define the rules for what happens to your character when they run into those obstacles. Really terrific. And if you go back and look, there is so much to learn. And every single one of these lessons comes with a relatively sophisticated uh, tutorial walkthrough in video format. Uh, video is helpful because you know you not only have the audio where you've got, you've got somebody telling you what to do, but they actually do cut to the actual composition screen and they show the, uh, the, 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 the author of the tutorial doing what needs to be done in the composition screen to show you almost to the activity what you need to do to create these games and these activities. Really, really cool stuff. So once again, I have to go back and highly recommend that if you're interested in learning how to code, or if you know kids who are interested in learning how to code, or better yet, if you know kids that maybe have the aptitude to learn how to code, get this app in front of them. It is one of the best. It's Hopscotch. It's available on the iPad. It's likely available in uh, on other platforms as well. I would imagine it's probably available for Android. I'll research that and I'll put that in my video description. Anyway, that's going to conclude this video. I thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you do like this video, if it's uh, encouraged you to check out Hopscotch or to do a little bit more research on your, on your own, I encourage you to like this video for me. It certainly does help me. And of course, if this is the kind of stuff that you like, please make sure to subscribe. I've got more videos coming. Thank you again, and I will see you all in the next video.